we're in the midst of a sensor revolution. We have sensors that track your sleep and trans sensors that track your steps. But what about a sensor to track what goes on up here? Well, in the past, if you wanted to know what was going on in your mind, you'd have to, clinically that is, you'd have to go to a research institution, sit very, very quietly, have a technician put an EEG on you, you'd have a massive wires coming out of your head and a whole bunch of goop. Well, I have my brain reader in my pocket. This is Muse, the brain sensing headband. There's sensors on the forehead and behind the ears, and it slips on just like a pair of glasses. It's actually able to track your brain activity, and then it sends it wirelessly to your smartphone or your tablet. From there, you can both understand what's going on in your own mind and interact in technology in some fascinating new ways. I started working with this technology about a decade ago in the lab of Dr. Steve Mann. How it works is by reading your brain waves. When you think or you do anything mental, your brain waves change. Brain waves are the sum total of the neuronal activity. Neurons send ele electrical communication back and forth. We can then take that brain wave activity and parse it into particular control signals. What we can do right now is very limited, but where the future is going is very interesting. I started by doing concerts where 48 people at a time could control musicians' output with their mind. So we ended up in these fascinating regenerative loops where people would think, it would change the musician's output, which would then change the way they think, going back and forth. We then said, this is really cool. We're making music with our minds. Can we also create immersive experiences? So we created a 3D environment where the elements of the environment were responsive to your brainwave state, still in very, very basic ways. If you focused, you could make it snow. As you relaxed, the birds would start to slow down and the sound and the lights would change. Then we thought, okay, we did music, we did screen experiences, can we do something physical? And that's when we got an amazing opportunity. The Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics, we allowed people to control some very, very big things, the lighting on the CN Tower, the Canadian Parliament buildings, and Niagara Falls, with their mind from across the country. Over the 17 days of the Olympics, 7,000 people got to individually interact with these massive icons. So you would sit in Ontario House in Vancouver and look at a big screen that was a feed, live feed to the CN Tower. And by focusing on it, you could make the tower lights spin. The more you focused, the faster it would spin. Focusing increases your beta brain activity, and we use that as the trigger. So we got very excited, as you can imagine. People were controlling massive things with their mind from across the country. And we said, well, what else can you control with your mind? So we started to create things like thought-controlled toasters and thought-controlled slot car machines. And I made a levitating chair so that as you would relax, the chair would actually rise to the ceiling with the help of a handy-dandy winch. And we made things like a thought-controlled beer tap. Yes, you all want to come to our Christmas parties. As you focus on the, pole, as on the, focus on the tap, it indeed pours. Now, all of this was totally fascinating, and we thought we could control the world, and then we took a step back. At this stage, controlling stuff with your mind isn't really that meaningful. We all have hands that can do it much better than our minds can. What we can't do very effectively is control and understand our own minds. So we wanted to create applications and experiences that could teach people to understand and manage their own internal state. So we created an application called Muse Calm. It's able to track your brainwave activity and teaches you how to calm your mind. It does this using real-time feedback. So we help you understand your brain activity using a simple metaphor of wind. When you think, when you're ruminating, when you're wandering with your mind, you can hear your mind is windy. And as you learn to calm your mind with a focused attention exercise, the winds calm. The simple exercise of being able to calm your mind actually teaches you that you can have control and be able to manage your own internal state. People who do the simple focused attention exercise are then able to improve their attention, their working memory, decrease their stress, and improve their emotional intelligence. There's an interesting confluence of factors here. The market is clearly ready for this. There are two billion people that suffer from brain-based health and productivity challenges. It's a massive market impact. 
When you ask adults over 50 what their number one concern is, they say it is staying mentally sharp, and they say that above social security or physical health. The number one most stressed country in the entire world, the United States. $360 billion annual impact, according to the ABA, APA, of stress on our workforce. When you go into the workforce, you start noticing that there is a little buzz going around. And that's a buzz about emotional intelligence. We started to realize that the top performers in the workplace don't necessarily have the highest IQ, but they just typically have the highest EQ. They're able to understand and manage their own and others' internal states. So that when that report comes back with something that you really didn't like in it, you don't go and blame the person who wrote it. Or when you're really stressed and trying to reach a deadline, you don't act out badly towards the people around you. You're able to manage yourself and, instead, and, and downstream then manage your own performance in your relationships. Top performers know this. We've been working with Olympic athlete Aviana Chow. She's been using Newscom for the last six months and has been able to improve her scores and reduce her anxiety. So she's an Olympic sharp sharpshooter, and when she goes to take a shot, she's able to understand what goes on in her own mind, reduce the distractions externally, downregulate her internal emotional responses, decrease her anxiety, and hit her target. This is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We're all pretty familiar with this. It's you know basic sociology 101. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have basic needs, safety needs, social needs, all the things that we all basically have covered. We all have all of the luxury goods, all of the organic foods, everything we need to live really satisfied lives. We're now at the place where we can start to work on the top of the chain. Our esteem needs we can start to reduce those inner voices that tell us that we're not really as good as we hope we want to be. We can start to work on self-actualization, the things up here that let you perform and be what you want to do and who you want to be. So we see a pretty amazing opportunity here. Muse Calm is launching in just one month's time, and it's an application that helps you calm and settle your mind so you can manage your internal state. This is really just the beginning for brain sensing technology, though. Over the next five years, you're going to see a proliferation of devices like these in the marketplace, from myself and from my colleagues and partners in the space. Five years down the road, you're going to be doing things like sharing information with each other, or tagging photos on Facebook with your brain data. We're going to see applications that let you improve your health, improve your cognitive function, improve your sports performance, improve your kids' ADD. Kids with ADD have heightened levels of theta waves, or dream state, and lowered levels of beta waves, focus state. By playing games where they control something on screen with their beta waves, they can improve their ADD symptoms as effectively as Ritalin. Down the road, like 10 years down the road, we're going to start to see responsive technologies. Your technology is going to understand something about you and be able to change and adapt to support your interaction. Your computer might know that you're frustrated and change the size of the interface. Your iTunes playlist may know that you're depressed and play music that it knows makes you happy. Your phone will know that, it's a, that you are asleep and stop ringing. About 25 years down the road, we will indeed be controlling technology with our minds. There's an opportunity here to change the face of the future by changing the way we all think. Thank you. <laughs>